like never before. Oh, my soul, and worship be so Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. unto this God. The God yes, that has brought us God. thus far. It started 2021 with us. He had brought yes, us safely yes, to the God. end Pray of 2021. Me. As brutal as 2021 is, yes, the Lord God. has seen you and I through. Is worthy of all yes, our praises. Let's lift up our voice unto this God. The God that carried you through the whole year of 2021. The God that protected you from every form of evil. The one who provided for all your needs. Is the one who has been defending you. Even when you don't know. He protected you from every form of evil. You carry me. When some carry their cross, you feel the Lord. When some feel their cross, you fight for me. When some fight for us. this God that carried you through 2021. Brethren, he alone is worthy of all our praises. He alone is worthy to receive our glory, all honor, all adoration. Let's lift up our voice unto him. Appreciate him. A lot of people, they are carrying their gods all around. But it's the God that carried you. Many are feeding their God. But this God fed you all through 2021. Many are financing their gods. But this God has been provided for all your needs. He met you even when you least expected. He provided for all your needs. 
this service because you will have your way. Thank you precious Holy Spirit because beyond what we could ever ask or imagine you will do in our life tonight. Thank you daddy because everything that is not of you you will take them away tonight. Every tree that you God have not planted Thank you because they will not cross over with us into the new year. We bless you for all that you have in store for us for 2022. Because there shall be activation of them all tonight. Thank you for every word you are going to use tonight. Because fresh anointing you will release upon them all. Blessed be your holy name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we ask tonight that you will take control. Let your Holy Spirit flow like never before. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your presence tonight, Father. Let your presence saturate this place tonight. Your presence, O oh God. Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, let us not move either from here. Father, we ask for your presence in 2022. Let your presence go with us into this new year, Lord. And let us enjoy your presence like never before. In the name of Jesus. We go upon this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, go ahead and worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Eh? Go ahead and give him praise. Eh? Call him by his name, call him by his name. Eh? Call him by his name, call him that name you call him. In your closet. How you worship him in your closet. Sing to him in any language. Any language. Go ahead and worship him.
your maker. Go ahead and worship your maker. Is that what you can give to him? On the 31st of December, is that what you can give to your maker? How much he has done for you, for your family, for your home, for your business, for everything that has to do with him. Come on, wave your hands and say thank you to him. Father, we worship you. We worship you, Father. Oh, we say thank you. We are grateful indeed. Hallelujah to your holy name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Maker. Hallelujah. We worship your majesty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many grateful hearts do we have in the house this evening? Oh, I know. I see everyone is raising their hands. So that means we all came here with our dancing shoes. Are we ready to give him a dancing offering tonight? Hallelujah. Come on, let's go.
Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Halohim, Jehovah everything, Jehovah Obadu, you are everything to us. But lift your name high, Jehovah, Jehovah. Hey, Karabo Shata, Ye Karabo Soto, Ye Karabo. Jehovah, you are the most high God. You are. today. Just bless his name because he is great. Exalt him because he is great. Give him glory. Is he truly great to you? Has he seen you till this day? Is your heart truly thankful to this God? Are you exalting him tonight for the mighty one? worship you. Psalm 66 verse 16. Media, can you help us tonight? 
Psalm 66. If you have your Bible with me, please just turn your Bible to Psalm 66, verse 16. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. How many people are here to just give a testimony tonight for his goodness, for his greatness over your life? For all that he has done for you. He saved us through January, February. I tell you 12 months. Some months with 30 days, some 31 days, some 28 days. And he saved us through it all. 365 days of you not being ashamed. 365 days and you stand here in his goodness. Titus 3, 5, please. Media. Can you help us with Titus chapter 3, verse 5? Not by works of righteousness which we have done. We need to acknowledge tonight by God's mercy that we are not consumed. It's by his mercy that we are standing here tonight. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, he did what? He saved us. When the storm was blowing, when the wave was raging, he saved us. In joyful times, he still saved us. Up until this day, he's still saving us. I just want you to just lift your voice and say, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Psalm 65, media, can you help us? Psalm 65, verse 11. The Bible says, you crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. Has he done that for us this year? Has he failed on his words at all? Has he disappointed us at all? Is he reliable at all? Let's just bless him and say, Lord, we thank you. If all of us would come out to give a testimony, we will all have so many things to say of your goodness. Father, we bless your name. We give you all the glory. We adore you. We love you, Lord, with our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is there anyone who wants to come out to just testify to God's goodness for all that he's done for you this year? Do you want to stand before his people and declare his goodness before his people? If you have a testimony, just wave your hand and we'll call you forward. Praise God. Number one, please. Anyone wanting to give a testimony? Okay, Sister Docas, please come forward. Praise God. I just want to thank God for his faithfulness. For the numerous things God has done for me this year. I can't even count everything. I came into the year 2021 with so much uncertainty. But yes, the Lord opened doors for me and my family. But I actually come out right now because of what happened to my dad last week? Just last week, Thursday, my mom just called me today and she was telling me, she said she didn't want to tell us before that my dad was going to church because he's a, he's a pastor. So he was going to church and went by public transport. And um, we stay in Ikorodu. So his church is at um, Ketu. You might not know the area, the route anyway, but he was going from Ikorodu to Ketu. And that, um, you know, what, um, right now in Nigeria, where I come from, we're in Nigeria. Um, public transport would have been like twice the usual right now. So usually he said it would take um, my 12 from Ikorodu um, at I think 100, 150, but that particular they said was 500. And then there was this white bus that was saying 200, 200. I was like, oh yeah, this is a good one. That I mean, a lot of people bothered it, um, 200. And then when they bothered that, they were, they were just within five minutes. Um, distance from where he picked them and then I'll say it here when I was translated anyway so they said the person driving was on the phone was saying uh, no he said the moment they bothered the bus that he felt something and then, of course he couldn't tell them stop me anymore so he just sat and started praying and he was speaking and so he was praying and that after five minutes ride the driver was caught and it was like ah, I'm going to say it in, in English again 
Like they've taken black cattle, but this particular one that has one white spot on the body that is different from the rest. So I think the person said, ah, just drop that one. So he said, after five minutes, uh, right. And then the person said, hey, 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 just get down. Get down from the bus. You are not, you are not part of them. So I was like, hey, bole, bole. That was, my dad was like, what have I done? He did as if nothing was. What have I done? Like, so they won't change. What have I done? Just, just come down, come down. And they just threw him on, on the on the, and they drove the rest of them away for what they were going to do, whatever they wanted to do to them. And then when they dropped him, um, when he, they dropped him on the road, and then some people saw the way the uh, driver brought the bus and it was really rough. And said, ah, then daddy, what did you do? Why did they just drop like that? He said, I don't know. That, but I, I have a feeling what's going on. That this is what I. The moment I boarded the bus, something told me this is not right. And I started praying. And then it just, it was, see, they just took us from there and here and they just dropped me. And we're like, eh? I want yet to go one chance. Like the other ones that they've taken. Um, I mean, so it, it was like, this could only be God. Like, what? I was like, so what? I'm just like, but I'm like, what would I be saying? What if my mom would come and tell me this is what I'm, I'm, I'm just like, my God that I serve answers prayer. Hey, God of RHN answers prayer. I, I had this feeling last week when we were praying during prayer shift. But I just, Pastor was saying something about somebody's father, something was healed. Or, 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 it's not healed, but then I stood in God for my prayer, like my mom, my dad, wherever you are, I cover with the blood of Jesus. This is a season of blood. We are covered with the blood of Jesus. I mean, what would I have said? Just a few days to, to December, I'm 2021 already. I just give the glory back to God. I mean, Father, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for covering us. Not just us, even our extended. The pastor was saying that not just yourself, your people cover them with the blood of Jesus. I just thank God for making him different amongst the ones they've carried. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalm 65, verse 11. He crowns the year with his goodness, not with tears, but with his goodness. Father, we thank you. The next question is Praise God. Mountain, you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing. Truly, God makes a way. I still remember last year when I came for crossover, and I'm like, okay, God, 2021 was just a year of just launching out and trusting God like never before. Because we came for, I came for my master's last year, and then the pandemic happened. Things were just, I was like, God, who sent me? You know that kind of thing that when you're studying, and you're like, who sent me a message? Let me just finish this thing, my God. Someone that's not used to, you know, at the end of everything, everything went online, exams online. And I'm like, what's going on? So um, towards the end of the year, um, the government came up with something about the post-study. And I was like, okay, God, I trust you with this. Let's see how this goes. And so at some point, in, uh, when we were entering the year 2021, I was like, okay. Am I going back <laughs> or, or am I staying here? I think it came to that point that I would be at the end of 2021, but I just trusted God. I'm supposed to be here with my husband testifying this, but I thank God because he made a way. As in, he just made a way. He just made a way. I don't know how it happened, but he made a way just at the nick of time. <laughs> Yes, yes. He made a way just at the nick of time. And I was just telling someone that, okay, we had this family meeting. I was telling my family that 2020, 2021 was just the year of launching out because I'm like, how did it happen? But I'm grateful to God because at the end of 2021, there's stability. It was full with a lot of uncertainties. I was just like, God, what's going on? But I thank God because he made a way. I can't start saying every, all the stories here and there. But he made a way. And I'm so grateful to God for making a way. Do you want to add something? I just want to say, um, add to what she has said that 
there is something that has followed us from, from when we got married. And that thing is that we can never be stranded. So just at the dying minute, God just shows up. God just shows up. And I'm also very confident that before midnight, God will show up for someone. Yeah. Even here, just believe him. He is too faithful to fail. Hallelujah. Is that all? Praise the Lord. No matter how the year started, he crowns it with his goodness. We thank God for crowning the year with his goodness. Pastor Eniola, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for his faithfulness. Um, just buried a year now when we got to the UK. Um, and I want to say God has been good. It's just finding myself in Nottingham is another story. Because when I got to the UK, after like four months, someone said, change your job and change your visa. I said, I'm too new. I said, okay, let me just calm down. And I was praying. God said, why are you afraid to take up challenges? I said, okay. And so, because I did not want to take the job, I told the person, I have a friend in Northampton. So, I said, if you can get me a job in Canterbury, because I was in Kent, if I can get me a job in Nottingham, I didn't know my friend was not in Nottingham. I thought <laughs> I was speaking Northampton. So, when they brought the job, I said, we have gotten a job for you in Nottingham. I said, okay. The salary, I said, I want the highest of the salary. Just because I deal I said, I look at your salary now. It's, it's not going to get there. And I was working, and God said, what do you want? I said, well, maybe like this or so amount. He said, is that the best you want? I said, okay, let me go for the best. I said, let me go for the best. So after I did the interview, they actually gave me the best offer, the cap of the offer. I want to thank God for that. And I was now saying, okay, my friend, I, I've gotten a job, a new job. I'm changing my visa to the skilled worker visa. I said, okay, where are you? He said, I'm in Northampton. I said, ah. <laughs> I'm coming to Nottingham. I totally thought you were in Nottingham. I said, okay, let me go out with faith. And then, my family was still in Canterbury. I was in coming to Nottingham. I'm due to God's faithfulness. When I arrived in Canterbury, a Muslim friend just said, let me give you a car. He gave me a car. And so when I was coming to Nottingham, I just spoke to him. I said, ah, I'm coming to Nottingham. Ah, it will be a big hectic. He said, I'm actually going to sell my other car, but I'm giving you a gift. And so within the space of two years, God gave me <laughs> two cars without even buying it with my own money. <laughs> so I want to thank God for it was God all the way. Even coming to the UK, uh, it was God. Because the exam I was supposed to do I failed the exam by 0.5. And God said, and I preached a message in church. I said, do not keep on trying until you get it. God continued to try. God, <laughs> God tried until he moved from being good to very good. And after I finished the message, God said, I thought you preached a message. Why are you stopping? I said, okay, let me continue to try. And I tried. And God said, I said, I've tried though. It's 6.5. I'm supposed to get 7. So I've tried. God said, do three days video and return it. And after I did the they came back and the mark changed. And the, <laughs> the exam, at, the interview had closed. The, the official thing, had, and God said, submit again. And I submitted. I said, oh, are you ready for interview? After the thing has closed, I said, yes. And after I did the interview, they said, yeah, congratulations. And after I saw it, we were about 140, they only took about five. I said, this is God. So I want to thank God for his faithfulness, for his divine mercy in my family and in my life. Praise the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, in all your ways, to what acknowledge him. Do not lean on your understanding. I'm paraphrasing now. Always trust in him. He can do all things. Everything is possible with our God. Sister Comfort, please. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> My husband is outside. Babes, you can join me. Okay, um, thank you, ma'am, for that song. Praise God. Uh, my name is Comfort. Yes. And uh, while we were just singing the song, honestly, I wasn't planning to testify, but it just came to my heart that, oh, wow, how don't you, yes. Thank you, sir. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, um, I dropped.
graduated from, um, I kept my master's, let me not tell you. Yeah, the U.S., so I graduated my master's in cybersecurity. And the U.S. is tough. If you don't have security clearance, if you're not a U.S. citizen, uh, you have to trust the Lord. Yes. Or if you can get into this uh, big major companies like Microsoft, AWS, Amazon, you're good. And in competition, when in terms of interview, you can be very tough, so you have to be very good. And you need to have God's favor. So what happened was when I graduated, I was working for this nonprofit, and thank God for praying spouses. Husband, but back then he was really supporting me praying, you know. So I was working with this nonprofit two days, just working with them. Uh, after the, the, the day's work, they just told me that okay, um, sorry, we don't want you anymore. I said, ah, oh, okay. Okay, okay, sorry. So yeah, so <laughs> so they told me, uh, bye. We don't want you anymore. I'm like, wow, that's weird. This is just my second day, like. You have to wait till the end of the day while I was just uh, taking my bags and everything. And if you don't know where the U.S. is, I believe U.K. as well. In Nigeria, you know you can have, like, your neighbors that can help. If you're stranded, you can just go there and say, hello, they can help you. But in the U.S., uh, 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 so you have to trust the Lord, honestly, on your own. But what God did, I I can remember, I, I packed my bags and I came out. I just stood and it was raining and I was crying. I was like, oh, wow, I just graduated from prestigious university and I, I, I like what do I do like apparently the expectation is upon graduation you should have this and this but glory be to God uh, it was going the other way I, I never planned so what happened was when I was just standing outside it was raining this song just came to my heart I will make a way and I never knew the song when I'm back where against the wall and it looks as if it was over I took my bag and guess what happened God was like, I'm bringing you to that place where, like, your eyes will be fixed on them, but on me. Where your feet and your hands will, will be dependent on me. Just like this. Like, where there will be no plan B, no option B. So I want you, I want to teach you about trust and rest. So trust, rest. I will never fail you. <laughs> yeah, but look unto him and their faces were radiant. And so what God did was God raised people, men, sir, to help me, to help and aid me. In terms of the job, I got a good offer. Like the way God just worked, and it made me to realize that because I've done this, in terms of other things in your life, you just have to rest. And thank God for my family, my husband, my, my child. It has been like this since my husband is based in the UK, I'm based in the US. But God has been helping us so and fro, and by God's grace, we'll be settling together very soon. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's that? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> what, did he want to say something? Okay. Praise God. Our God is awesome. Sister, you please. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm a bit shy, but I want. I didn't want to come out before, but I'm. I'll be. I will not be grateful because I know Pastor knows about the testimony. <laughs> Oh, thank God. Here I come, here I come. Here I come. Um, <laughs> um, we came into the UK last year. In fact, we bought God's scholarship. In fact, the scholarship was a miracle. I bought God's scholarship, a very popular one, sponsored by the British government. And um, it had um, a kind of a condition that after one year, you return back to your home country, right? My husband also, in that period of time, that last year was just one. You know, before then, I, I saw his scholarship. I told him, this, we are not even sure. He wanted to go to the U.S. before. And um, I, was, I already got the scholarship in the U.K. Well, what are we going to do? So I came, I saw something online. I said, just to apply. And he applied. And it was, it was just like that. He got it. Fully funded. If I want to tell the story, sometimes it's always like, ah, you couple, you are, you are a miracle couple. Go to scholarship. Fully funded. I got to the UK without paying penny. You know, the the the, the sponsor paid everything. I, it was just like I just carried my bag and just came to the UK. I didn't pay anything, and it was throughout last year and this year it has been God. And again, you know, that condition of going back to the home country came about again, and we were like, what are we going to do? You know, I'm already 
my eyes already knows me. I, I'm already the kind of person that you are, you are going back. I'm not. I'm saying there is more work to be done in in Nigeria than here. You know, I'm always like that. This place they already they already established. Let's go back. But my son will say no, 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 no. And like God was like saying, there's something to be done here. My husband got uh, a job. In fact, about three offers. The first one was like, okay, let's just manage it. He came again, the second one. Wow. I was, oh, thank God, this is happening. It was, go- it was going to be sponsored. They sponsored him like, okay, we're going to sponsor you for this. That means that I'm, I'm going to be independent for him, so I will be able to stay with my husband here. He got the second, okay, the first, the second, the third. I was, wow, if I came again to the fourth, it was like, <laughs> I don't know. It was like, oh my God. And the pay was like, it was something above, above what was required. I was like, God, this is just can be you. It can be you. It can be you. And God indeed has been opening doors. My eyes were somewhere else. God said, no, your eyes should be here. Indeed, I know God has been opening doors for us and for this family. We just want to say thank you. I will be ungrateful to God not to say God has been good to us in 2021. We are here to say thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sister Nike. Praise God. Isn't God marvelous? So is there anyone that their hearts are still waiting to be encouraged? Just listen to all these testimonies. What do you think can be impossible with God? Absolutely nothing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor really set me off today. <laughs> Praise Indeed, God. I know I'll be ungrateful not to come out. I just want to bless God because um, beginning of this year, I was really asking God for favor, direction in terms of career and decision. And then three months ago, I just realized I needed to do something. I wanted to apply for a different role. And then I took my chance because actually I was working on a role, but I felt like, you know, this uh, it's not up to capacity and I needed to do more. And then I applied for this job. And within the week, I was um, scheduled for like three interviews. And they were like really nice interviews. I had the first one on Friday. And after the interview, I was even telling my husband that I seemed prepared more than the people interviewed me because I was so calm. Because I'm like, what, what's the highest that could happen? And then before the day, they called me and I got the job offer. And they needed me to respond. And I said, yes, even though I had another job, I said, yes, I'm taking the job. And on Monday, I went to my office. I told my manager, I gave him my notice and all of that. I was like, oh, I didn't care. I will miss you and all of that. I'm like, all right, bye. And then I went back to my desk. I just saw people going up and down and all of those. And my manager was just going to the conference room and all of that. And then he called me back. We don't want you to go. I said, oh, interesting. What do you have? And then he was offering me a particular role that I knew the role was open, but I just, I didn't. I just like, no, they won't give it to me. And then he was offering me the role. I'm like, oh, okay, let's discuss. And then the next day he said, let's come for an interview. I went into the interview and I spent literally 20 minutes. They were convincing me why I should take the role. And they were giving me offers and giving me conditions. Like, what do I want to do? I'm going to have my own team. I'm like, are you serious? That day I literally had headache. Because I'd already accepted the, pre- the first offer, and now this one was giving me a counter offer. And the other one now called me, I've sent an email, I'm sorry, I can't accept your offer. I got another one, they're like, what are they giving you? We're going to top it up. I said, all right. <laughs> I was literally having a headache, but a very good one. I'm like, God, I like this kind of headache. Like, <laughs> I had to like weigh my options, and then at the end of the day, I decided, I just like, God, can I do this? And then I started doubting myself. But um, this month is going to be, I'm going to be two months on the road. Last month, there's a particular target that is meant to be delivered on the road because um, I need about um, 16 finance managers to agree with me for me to achieve that target. And then that target I've not been able to achieve for like about a year on that road. They've not been able to achieve it. And um, November, I achieved the target. <laughs> I just want to bless God because I, I, uh, I just can only be him. And thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Praise God. Glory be to God. What a mighty God we serve. Sister Kemi, please. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. God has been so good. I want to give this testimony on behalf of my daughter. She came home one day. She, they did the um, exam. And then um, she came home. 
after getting a result. I came back from work. I met her crying because that's a kind of person. She was so distressed and I'm like, what's the matter? And she said, the mock result came out and I, will, I didn't expect them to put me in the position because I know I'm better off than where I was put. So I just encouraged her and I said, when you get to school, talk to your teacher. Let them know that this is not where you should be. You're better than where they put you. Anyway, to cut the long story short, I came back from work and she jumped on me. This is after when they, after the school, whatever. So she jumped on me and I'm like, oh, what is this? Let me come in by the door. And she was showing me a certificate dancing. Anyway, this subject, she was put down after the mock exam. She came best out of year 10, out of the whole year 10 in our school. So I just want to thank God for life, for wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's just appreciate God for all these great testimonies tonight. Let's just bless him because he who has started a good work in us, he's able to complete it all. Let's thank him because if he has done this much in 2021, obviously 2022 has much more in store for us. Let's just appreciate him with a heart of gratitude and say, Lord, we are so grateful. We exalt your name. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We thank you because the sound of joy and rejoicing will continue to fill our homes. Our lips will continue to worship and praise you. Testimonies will never end in our lives, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you because you are a God who is good enough for us. Who is great for us. Who will never let us be put to shame. Father, we bless your name. Our reliable God, we exalt you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Is anybody excited to be in God's presence on the last day of 2021? Amen. Amen. I remember in past days we kept telling you that you would be in the crossover service. And here you are. Are you happy about that? Just put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. I just want you to... So if you are in any department and you are a leader or whatever department you are serving in, so please prepare yourself for the eight of January. I think more details will be communicated in the course of the services that we would have before that day. Amen. So now to the weekly activities. For 2022, our service time remained the same on Sundays, 9 a.m. for first service and 11.30 for second service. Amen. Um... On the 9th of January, the Sold Out Youth Church would begin as well. That happens on six, at 6 p.m. Amen. And on Sundays, we have prayer shield. Amen. And that is the Zoom prayer meeting that we have on uh, 11 p.m. And I think this is a practice that we have done years after years. So I want to encourage you, if you are looking for goals to set for yourself, this is something to say I will not miss prayer shield in 2022. Amen. All right. So um, on Saturday, we have the Aretan intercessory prayers. And like I always say, this prayer is not just for the people in the prayer unit. This is an opportunity for you to build capacity in the place of prayer. We hope that one of the goals that you will set for yourself in 2022 would be to build capacity in prayer. Amen. So we're giving you opportunities to partner with you to ensure that that goal comes to pass. Amen. Every last Friday of the month, we have um, the Holy Ghost Night. Um, more details of this would be communicated to you. But it starts from 8 p.m. until 12 midnight. So please, let's make time to be there. So you promise yourself that you will not miss another Holy Ghost night in the year 2022. And of course on Wednesdays we have Bible studies from 7 p.m. And of course I think the last Wednesday we have the Firebrand prayer meeting. So we just thought it was necessary to reiterate these things 
for us, uh, for people who might be in this service for the first time, and also for those who are already here but are not aware, or those who are looking for ideas on how to improve their spiritual work with God in the year 2022. These are avenues that we have made available to partner with you to achieve this goal. And I want to believe that as you apply yourself to these things, God will help you to achieve your spiritual targets in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Has God been good to you? Has God been faithful to you? Just put your hands together for him. Shout and give him praise. Give him all the worship. Exalt his holy name. He's worthy in all his ways. He's mighty in all his acts. He's faithful in everything. Father, we exalt you. Glory to your name. Amen. It's wonderful to see our faces on the last day of the year. And God has indeed been good. God has indeed been good. And I know, even though today is the 31st day of the month of December, this year, I just want to let you know that God is just starting with us. Um, before we plunge in this moment, I want to encourage you to try as much as you can to jot down things beyond what whoever that is ministering is saying. I sense it in my spirit that the Lord will be giving you a word to run with. One of the things that the word from the Lord does to us is that at the moment of confusion in life, at the moment of depression, that part of your life, that phase of your life, when you have no one to talk to, when you have no one to run to, there is something that keeps propelling you. It is thus says the Lord. If the Lord has said it, I am so confident that he will do it. I want to be very sensitive. Hear ye him this night. And I want to repeat, hear ye him. Because he will indeed speak to you. One thing I know is that God can the crowd, yet he speaks to you individually. So beyond the corporate manifestation of the world and the anointing, I am very sure that the Lord is going to single you out for a definite visitation that will linger with your life even until your dying day. That is how you know when a man has encountered the Lord. That the traces of that encounter linger with him all through his life. And I know that God is setting us up this night for such a moment. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from come and my help. My help Shut up, I'm not gonna 
God begins to lay in your heart, begins to direct you to do, and you come to a conclusion that this thing cannot be delivered until God helps you. Because he's giving you a dream that is bigger than you. He's giving you a vision that is bigger than your capacity. He is showing you a realm of glory beyond the imaginations of your heart. What have ever conceived, you have never conceived it. And the Lord is telling you, my son, this is why I'm taking you to. My daughter, this is why I'm taking you to. My son, I am raising you up beyond the thoughts of your heart. I am pulling you from the mighty clay. And I'm going to see your feet upon the rocks. I am pulling you from where life has obscured you. And I am bringing you to sit with kings and the princes of your time. And you are going to ask yourself, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And the Lord shall say to you, the power of the Lord shall come upon you. Beyond what hands, beyond what intellect, beyond what mind can give to a man. And I see 2022 as a year that the Lord should open your eyes to see the glory thereof. All that you just ask is, Lord, help me. Some of us have come to a point and you are telling yourself, maybe it, it, this is where it ends. But the Lord is saying, yet a new chapter is about to be opened. About your life, about your destiny, about your marriage, about your career, about your ministry and all that concerns you. And all he's asking you tonight to do is cry out for help. Because you will indeed need his help. of this service he gave me just a word and that word is help 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 2 Kings 6 25 and there was a great famine in Samaria and behold they besieged it until an ass head was sold for three for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cup of those dung for five pieces of silver and as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall there cried a woman unto him saying help my lord O king and he said if the lord do not help thee whence Shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? A time came in Samaria, the capital of Israel, that they were hit by a very terrible poverty, famine, scarcity. And it was so bad that men became carnivorous. Women would come together and agree to eat their children, to kill their children and eat them in tongues. It was so bad and a certain woman had an agreement with her neighbor and the agreement was who eat my child today and tomorrow will kill yours and eat after the first day everything was fine but the next day the woman became hungry again so she went to her neighbor and said we had a deal and our deal is that we eat my child and we eat yours afterwards. And the woman hid her child and refused to bring forth her child for the child to be killed. She began to cry, who will help me? And she ran to the king of Samaria. God bless you, choir, for the sacrifice. Please, you can come forward and sit down. Amen. God bless you. And he went to the king and said to the king, Look at what is happening. I've lost my child, and it's her turn for us to eat her own child. But she has hid her child and refused to bring the child out. 
Say, King, help me. Oh, King, help me. The king cried out also. Say, the way you are crying for help, the same way I am crying for help. Where do you want me to help you from? Is it from the barn floor? The barn floor is empty. Is it from the wine press? The wine press has dried up. There is no wheat in the barn floor. And there is no wine from the wine press. Everybody is hungry. Everybody is tired. Everybody has come to the end of what they know in solving this problem. And the king said, if the Lord does not help you, and if the Lord does not help me, there's no way any of us will find help. Brethren, in about 10 minutes, we begin to pray. But I want you to understand this now, that each time God gives you an assignment to do, each time God gives you a task to deliver, he wants you to also depend on him for the strength, for the enablement. When the God told me, he son, he said to me, son, I never created you to be independent. I created you to perpetually depend on me for everything. And the reason why I want you to depend on me is that we might maintain our bond of friendship, our bond of fellowship, our bond of communion. And that is why I don't get angry with people when they begin to ask for God to bless them. It is good. You are not being selfish. God wants us to keep that relationship. See, anything you receive on earth that does not come from the Lord, it is just a matter of time. You will look for it and you will not find it. Until God helps a man, that man will continue to need help. Until God comes to the rescue of a nation, a nation will continue to ask for support. They will continue to ask for help. When God helps a man, then a man is truly helped. If God does not help you, brethren, you are not yet helped. The psalm is said in Psalm 108, verse 12. Give us help from trouble. For vain is the help of man. One thing about the help of man is that nobody can help you beyond the limit of his own capacity. Beyond the limit of his own strength. What if what God wants you to do is bigger than you, bigger than the capacity of the person you are asking for help? So as much as the person is willing to help you, the best the person can do for you is for you to become like him. Not really to become like what God wants you to be. And the psalmist said, help us, O God, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do violently, for he is he that shall tread down our enemies. 2022, I'm so convinced in my spirit that the Lord is going to, I, I was telling a brother yesterday, I said, what God is said to do in this ministry and in our lives individually, let me say it in Nigerian Pidgin English, ego loud. Which means there is a blessings of God upon your life. Anyone that comes in contact with you sees that blessing. Anyone that sees you will know that truly the oil of God, the hand of God is upon your life. And that is what I'm talking about. The kind of visitation that you don't broadcast it. But anyone that hears about you, anyone that sees you will see one thing about you. This is truly a man that has been helped by God. And when God helps a man, he leaves a signature on the man's life. And the signature is this. I am the Lord God Almighty. Is there anything too hard for me to do? See, when God does a thing, he does it in such a way that you don't get confused who to give glory to. Because it is only one person that can deliver it, and his name is God. It is a signature on it that each time you look at it, you remember, surely... This is the finger of God. And that is the realm the Lord is taking us to. When God wants to help a man, one of the things he does is that he gives you the gift of men. The blessings of God that flow to us, in most cases, flow from God through men to us. 
One of the greatest treasures of any man, one of the greatest gifts any man can receive of the Lord is the gift of men whose heart the Lord has touched. See, I'm talking about men that are ready to take bullets for you. Men that will vow and they will say, until this person succeeds, I will not rest. Men that will say to themselves, I have a mandate from the Lord to ensure that this man comes to the fulfillment of his destiny. So one of the visitations and the encounters that some of us will have, it might not look supernatural to you, but suddenly next year, a strange man will walk into your life. By the time the man is leaving, you will look at yourself and say, what happened to me? Because the man has moved you from where you used to be to where God ordained you to be. You know, when Jesus carried his cross, and it became difficult for him to continue. A man came to help him. Joseph of Arimathea came to help him carry the cross. I, I, I read something in the scriptures that should be um, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Chapter 2. When God commanded, let me just say this, brethren. When God gives you a dream that is connected to greatness, he makes every resource you need available. But the resources most times, they are hidden in men. And that is why you need to pray, Lord, help me. And one of the prayers of help is, Lord, open my eyes to know the role of the people around my life and what you have called them to do for me. I once told a friend of mine, see, the kind of money you are asking for, I do not have it. But I know that there is a man somewhere that can sign that check for you and his account balance will not notice it. Amen? So there is really no problem known to man on earth that is connected to this physical earth that the solution is not in the hand of someone. But if the Lord will open our eyes to know the men in our lives and the role that God has called them to play. God told Solomon through David, build me a temple. And he began to build. And a strange man who had a covenant with his father walked into his life. In the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 11, verse 16. 11 to 16. I'll just read through it. Chapter 2, 11. King Hiram sent this letter of reply. Listen carefully to Solomon. It is because the Lord loves his people that he has made you the king. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who made the heavens and the earth. He has given King David a wise son, gifted with skills and understanding, who will build a temple for the Lord and a royal palace for himself. I am, listen, I am sending you a master craftsman. Ned Huram Abi, who is extremely talented. He is from the tribe of Dan in Israel, and his father is from Tyre. He is skillful at making things from gold, silver, bronze, and iron. He also works with stone and wood. He can work with the purple, blue, and scarlet cloth and fine linen. He is also an engraver and can follow any design given to him. He will walk with your craftsmen and those appointed by my, by my Lord David, your father. Send along the wheat, barley, olive, oil, and wine that my Lord has mentioned. We will cut whatever timber you need from the Lebanon mountains. And we float the logs in rafts down the coast of the Mediterranean Sea to Joppa. From there, you can transport the logs to Jerusalem. God sent a man, a strange king, king of Tyre, Hiram, and said to him, ensure that this mandate I have given Solomon is delivered. And when Solomon counted all his men, he noted that some people were missing. And one of the people who was missing was the man that has the skill. The skill to design everything that needed to be designed in the temple. And not sure that the king sent this man to Solomon. He said, I will also, and that suggests to you, that the timber of Lebanon that was used in the construction of the temple came from Tyre. A man 
donated it and he did not request for something in return. The gift of men. Men that will help you and will not blackmail you with it. Men that will help you and will not turn you into a slave because they have helped you. Men that will help you and they will not go outside and broadcast it. Men that will help you and they will not mock you with it. Men that will help you even when the relationship is no longer there. They will not use their help against you. Men whose heart the Lord has touched. This man can only come from God. And they are messengers of hell from the Lord. Shalamanamana Mosataya. When God wants to help a man, he said that he sent you a man because of our time, I won't go into details. Or he sent you an angel. There is a dimension of Christianity. If the Lord should bring you to that realm, you ask yourself, is there really anything impossible and difficult on this planet Earth? Because you walk into an environment where you are troubled on every side. A man without origin, a man without death of birth, a man without relatives, walks into your life, sorts out the issues of your life, and walks away, and there is no trace. Oh, you're expecting angels to come with wings, flapping. No! Halaman Namo Shatayaha. Several times I've been stranded. One of the occasions I went to preach, I wasn't driving then, back a long time ago in Nigeria. And I was stranded on the road. I just said, Lord, want me to go back to where I'm coming from, Send a car. If you don't want me to go back, send accommodation. And suddenly someone came and stood beside me and said, I don't know where you are going to, but I want to take you to where you will sleep this night. See, today, I don't know who that person is. There's no connection. There's no link. And I slept very well. In fact, he took me to the house of a reverend minister. So I was troubled at night. When God wants to help you, he sent an angel. Do you know why? Angels, they are creatures that excel in strength. The physical things that your hand cannot do, just a finger of an angel will get it sorted out. The Bible called them the creatures of God that excel in strength. When it comes to what you need strength to do, and your strength is failing you, when it comes to what you need might to do, and your might is failing you. Maybe it is time for the Lord to send the angels of heaven. Who are ordained to minister to the needs of the saints. They are called the angels. And he stood before Joshua. And Joshua looked at him and said, who are you? Where are you coming from? He said, I'm the commander of the hosts. I have just come to deliver a message to you. You will begin to have an encounter with angels. Oh, Jesus. You know, sometimes we pray very strange prayers. But I want you to begin to dare things in the spirit. Ask the Lord one day, Lord, I want to have an encounter with an angel. And insist. You see him show up. Don't be asking and be afraid of the other part of your heart. How will this experience look like? But I tell you, it's going to be memorable. And finally, when God wants to help a man, why I'm emphasizing on help is because you're going to need it next year. You're going to need it in the coming year. Because what God wants to do for you in your life and through your life, your human strength will not be able to deliver it. It will come to a point where you will come to the end of yourself. And at that point, it's time to hands off and the Lord take the wheels. Lord, take the wheels. When God wants to help a man, he sets the man on fire. He sets the man on fire. And a man that burns for the Lord is a man that even the laws of nature can no longer stop. Is a man that his strength cannot wither. Is a man that his strength cannot fail. The Bible said, if you fail in the days of adversity, that your strength is small. But out of our midst this night, 
God is raising a people that he will infuse with the fire of his presence that nothing will be able to say no to them that nothing will be able to stop them that nothing have you not read in the scriptures that when you come to that point you don't know what to say he said I will give you a mouth and a wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to gain say nor comprehend they will not be able to say no to you because you're a man of a strange spirit you're a man of a strange fire John talked about this fire he said I indeed baptize you I indeed baptize you with water but he that is coming after me, Matthew 3 verse 11, he that is coming after me, that is mightier than I, he said, who sanders latchet I'm not worthy to unloose. He said, he will indeed baptize you with Holy Ghost and with fire. Many of us are baptized with the Holy Ghost, but yet to manifest the fire dimension of the baptism. And I tell you, in the next few minutes we're going to pray, I want you to expect that help to come upon you and let the Lord carry you on the wings of grace. I bring you to where he ordained for you in destiny. Can you just rise on your feet? Shala brala do sakataya. Mako so brale kadabo shataya. Leke de borokoto so brale kadabo shataya. La brale kadaba shada labasia. Do you need help from the Lord for the journey, for the race? Can you ask for that help? Just ask for that help. Help a man. I just mentioned few, but what I'm very sure of this night is that the Lord is helping, sending help from Zion unto us. Because of the journey ahead, because of the task, because of the vision, because of the assignment, help is coming. Help is coming. Help is coming. Marakata balados kataya. Mashata la baladosia. Lay your hands upon me, Lord. Lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me, oh Lord, I need your hand. Lay your hands upon me, Lord. Lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. Oh Lord, I need your hands. Impartation of help is coming upon you. Rashakalamanakasatayaha. Lord, can you ask him, Lord, put your hand on me. Your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me, Lord. Lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. Oh, Lord, I need your hand. Lay your hands upon me. Lord, send your fire, send your fire upon me, Lord. Send your fire on me. Send your fire on me. Oh Lord, I need your fire. going to ask the Lord, I have come to the end of myself. Lord, I hands off and I ask that you help me tonight. Help me tonight. I don't know the vision you have for yourself concerning next year. Like I told them one of the days we are praying, if you can deliver that vision by yourself, it is most likely it's not of the Lord. Because when vision comes from God, 
it is such that human strength cannot deliver it. You will need a supernatural enablement. You will need an encounter from the Lord. You will need the hand of the Lord to carry you and bring you to the fulfillment of that vision. Now, can you ask him about God tonight? I receive help to run. 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 Rashaka Palekaya. Esoko Paya. Lekete Kataya. Mashada da 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 The Lord is saying that so not just will I help you I will empower you to the extent that you become the person providing help to others. Maybe all the while you've been at a position where you're the one asking for help. But the Lord is releasing an empowerment tonight that will make you the helper of other people's destiny. Now can you ask the Lord beyond the help that I get to the level where my hands will begin to deliver help unto others. Where my life will become a testament. A testament of a man that you have helped who has been transformed to provide help unto others. Mashaka palakada bosataya. Libra lakada parakatosa kapayaha. Ibra lakada balamo shatala bosia. Lakata labalado shatayaha. Mashatalabalada <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Finally, before. Thank you, Father. We receive help tonight. We receive help to do mighty things. We receive help to do great things. Someone is breaking away from limitations. Someone is breaking away from the things that have held you at a particular place. Things that have kept you bound. Things that have obscured your glory. Things that have veiled your beauty. The veils are tearing. The walls are falling. Help is coming. Help is coming. To you that indeed help has come. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name, O oh God. Thank you, awesome God. Lord, we will come back and we'll say it was the Lord that helped us in the name of Jesus. And I announce to you today. By the reason of tonight's encounter, you will do great and mighty things that will blow your mind. You will do great and mighty things that will surprise even you. Because the Lord is helping you. You will run by the strength of the Lord. You will run by the help of the Holy Ghost. You will run by the empowerment of the Spirit. You will burn for the Lord like never before. Mountains will see you and they will skip like rams. Ways will be made for you. Even in the wilderness. Impossible situations will see you and bow. 
because you have not come by your own strength. You have come by the help of the Lord. Thank you for the force of the Spirit that will push us, oh God, into greatness in this season. In Jesus' mighty name. Someone just sing to him right now.
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Standing, I want you to please bear with us. You have less than one hour into 2022. So, just no matter how inconvenient it might be, just bear with us. And I know they have some inches outside with the overflow camera. Just uh, I hope they are working on it. Praise God. Many people know that indeed your help is coming. Thank you, Jesus. Why I can't you ready to minister with me? Can you do it? Okay, receive grace to do it. Receive grace to do it. In 2020. 
22 the Lord said I will give you a sudden miracle that will change the trajectory of your life in the name of Jesus there's somebody here you're an engineer you're an engineer So let me tell you how tonight is going to go. I'm going to preach the word by the grace of God. I'm going to preach the word by the grace of God. We're going to pray. Amen. Before in the past, we used to anoint before the end of the service. But while I was praying, the Lord said to me, Say, Samuel, no. You don't anoint them for the old year. You anoint them for the new year. So the anointing service will be after 12 o'clock. Watch this. It's not going to be long. Immediately after the 12 o'clock, we're going to praise God, we're going to give our offering, we're going to dance, and of course, there's going to be all the men of God that we prayed, we fasted for days, we're going to anoint you for what God is going to do in 2022, and in, in this kind of service, there is no grace, so immediately you carry your anointing, put it on your head, if I were you, I will not go around, I'll be going to chop chop it, the Lord said, I should tell you, this is what he said, actually, he said, when the oil comes to your head, when the oil comes to your head, get make sure you get it to something that is valuable in your life when you get home and place the same oil on it and see me work miracle in 2022 hallelujah glory to jesus and of course you know how it works uh, many of you that are coming for the first time messages like this don't have title they don't have title until when it is the new year amen to jesus but if you're a son of the spirit you already know the title hallelujah to jesus Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Daniel 11, 20, 32. And if, if you're a student of the Bible, Daniel 11 is a powerful scripture. And Daniel 11 is a, is a scripture that was written over the time. And it was a prophecy of a dispensation of people and grace and kings. In the time, in the time of kings. But while things were going on in the physical realm, the man of God was writing things in the spirit realm. It is important that you know that the things which are seen, are, which are seen physically are controlled by the things which are not seen. 
Are you listening to me, George? If you don't understand that, you're going to run what is called the rat race. Are you listening to me? If you don't understand it, you will run the rat race. But listen, you must understand that no matter what is going on in the herd, there is a system of God that controls things. The Bible says he's seated in heaven. He call him, we call him the monarch of universe. He seated in heaven and he decrees and declares what happened on earth. Nothing, nothing happened without God. Are you on my keys? Huh? Nothing happened without God. God is in control. I know he's in control of my life. He's in control of everything I do. I was emotional a little bit here when I was doing the worship because just just flashed me back when I came to Nottingham with a suit and there was nothing right home about me and I stand in the city center, I took a picture and I'm going on my way and and the spirit told me he said by this time next year you'll be back at home and I said look you must understand that sometimes you must know what sponsor where you come from to where you are right now. I've told you many times, we didn't just appear in the scene. Ah. Parabo Sopra. Daniel 11.32 says, And such as do wickedness against the covenant shall be corrupted by flatteries. I don't have time. Don't worry, I will teach you later on this later. But they, but the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Tonight I'm going to be breaking this scripture down to you as if you have never heard it before. For people, the people that know their God. He will wait hey, upon Oh, his presence is full of joy. was writing to a generation. Daniel was writing in the midst of corruption, in the midst of the kingship. Daniel was writing something that if you get the understanding of today's message, 2022 will be easy for you. You have told you before, let me sound the alarm. Men are not the same. You see, when you want to be complacent, you hear the testimony of the man of God. If you are the one that failed an exam, what will you do? You are that going to be looking for a next money to pay the exam. Am I right? Listen to me. Men are not the same. I said that to you. You must believe that, sir. Men are not the same. It is easy for us to say we are all saved by the grace of God. Yes, that is the grace that welcomes you in. But when you come into the kingdom and into this kingdom, you must understand that men through sacrifice can separate themselves. And the Bible says, for the people that know their God, shall be strong and do exploit. I'm going to step with it. the people. Somebody said the people tonight. The people. The people. The people. The people. The people. The people. It, I, I love the Bible. <laughs> I love the Bible because sometimes you begin to see yourself in the picture of the Bible. Hey. When I back was against the You sing it. Only because you made the part I love. 
We are surrounded with great cloud of witnesses. While you are crying your own cry, Paul is looking at you and says, is it the same Christ that saved me, that saved you? <laughs> the Bible say Paul was in, it was Peter. Peter was in, in, in chain in the prison. Prison guard was left and right. They told him they would kill him tomorrow and the man was sleeping. Try it before. All that it burst in tire, you already shouting blood of Jesus. It was your tire that burst. They told the man we will kill you tomorrow. And he was sleeping. Ah, there's something in you, sir. That ordinary people don't know. The people that know their God. The people. Hebrew 11, 32 to 40 was the one talking about men that know God. He said, what shall I say? The time will fail me to talk of Gideon. Of Barak and Samson and Jephthah. Also of David and Samuel. I loved, I could have talked about all of them. Don't worry. When we go into the year, we take each one of them one after the other. But can I talk about David? The people that know their God. What do you think David knew? Jesse. He was a son of Jesse. And the Bible says, Saul said, Who will kill this Goliath for us? Anabasuto <laughs> brother. Who will kill this Goliath for us? And David was there. And the brother said to David, he said, You have come again with the naughtiness of your heart. And David said, Is that no cause? Where will an uncircumcised Philistine begin to look at my life and be disgracing God in our life? And the Bible says, I've always wondered what did David know? But you will soon know what he knew. Because the Bible says when he stood in front of Goliath, <laughs> he said, you've come to me with sword. You've come with me with arrow. You've come to me with spears. But I came to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hold on. Hold on. Who told him? Who told him? Listen to me. David had an understanding. That what sponsor a man is not his height. He understood that there's a spirit in man. And he looked at Goliath. Though you are bigger, but nothing is sponsoring you. Something is sponsoring me. His name is the Lord of us. Something is sponsoring my life. So when you look at Goliath, you look at him from head to toe. He said, you, today, there's a system that backed me up. That system is not backing you. You miss that. Because when he said, he said his name is the Lord of hosts. Huh? He said, there's a system backing me up, sir. And he sized up Goliath in one second. How can you bullshit? The people that know they are God. Because of time, I'm, I'm, I'm just rushing all my message. Like I said, we're going to go back. The first thing you must understand here is, in this kingdom, we function in this kingdom by knowledge. If you don't know, I've, I've given you that testimony here for the fact that you are sleeping and you are snoring and you don't understand their activities in your life does not mean they don't exist it's just that you don't know and I've seen men that don't know I've seen husband that don't know I've seen wife that don't know I've seen men look at me and say pastor what should I do see men that don't know knowledge say people that know their God pastor uh, uh, do you know God do you know him
where is God? Where does he sleep? Where does he stay? Is it because you are a redeemed member? And you think you know God? Or because you are a deeper life? Or because you are a Pentecostal church? Or you know, what you know is the denomination, sir. Until you come into the place of encounter, you don't know God. Ah, you know God? Ah, ah, do you know this God? Do you know him? Does he know you? Does he know where you stay? In 2022, God said, I should tell you. It was Sam, it was David that was saying it. He said, I hunger for you. As the deer part after the water broke, so my soul longed for you. It was him that was also talking when everything was not working. Paul said that I may know him and the power Do you know how to know God? In 2022, the first step is an encounter. Every man that subdued their generation are men of encounter. What story will you tell your generation? Is Jehovah Jireh? Is Jehovah Nisi? Is Jehovah Elohim? Those are personal names that men gave to God based on the encounter that they have. In this generation, men are coming with a new name. You are worthy of my prayer. The revelation of God that you know. Many of us will give him the name like he's a present help in time of need. A time is coming my generation I will sit my children down and tell them the story of how he showed up for me in the last minute. One day in this land I took them in my car. I said children let's go for a ride and we begin to go to every house we have lived in. We went to one house. My son looked at me. He said, Dad, do you mean we lived here? I said, this is where you were born. I'm not talking about Nigeria. Here in the UK. You must be able to trace your step back. I told you before, if you cannot see a gap in your life, and the only thing that fills that gap is God, you have not started the journey with him. An encounter. Some of you, it's because of what you are going through. Every door was closed. Nobody was helping you. But one thing you do, you lock yourself up in the room. And you cry to the God Almighty. And he showed up for you. When somebody asks you, who is this God? You say, the God that showed up. 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 Generation after generation, keep praising. There's no <laughs> you say, say yeah. Are you singing it to him? Generation.
what I call revelation. And when revelation comes, it brings what I call conviction. The problem I have with this generation is that we are not convinced or we are not to that point where we can be at the point of sword and say if the Lord that we serve is not able to save us, O King, we will not bow down. Who told them that God can come in fire? Who told them? Conviction. Conviction. You have an encounter with God. At that point, there is no doubt that God is real anymore. Listen to me. For the complete for the things that will happen in 2020, the only way you will survive it is your knowledge of God. Conviction. What sponsored what you do? What sponsored the activity in your life? Conviction. It was David that was writing. He said, I've been young. Now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor is seed begging for hell. I am convinced beyond the shadow of doubt that if it remains one second, God that I saw will show up. See, the problem in church we have is we do things we do things because we all have to do it. So when we are singing, how about shut I have a father. Hold on now. Almighty Father. You understand? He, the problem we have in church is that it's a chorus to many people. It's a chorus to many people. So we sing it as a chorus. He has nothing that is burning out of your spirit. Listen to me. I have a father. I know what it means for God to stand up and stand up and defend me. I know what it means to carry me on his wings. I have a father. I am convinced more than life that this God is real. Hold on. It was the apostle that was writing. I don't have time. It was the apostle that was writing. He said, what we teach you? He said, we are partaker of it. We are not telling you fable story. Listen to me. If I tell you God is going to lift you up, I've gone through this. I told you there before many testimonies. I was inside Amazon bus, driving in the midst of nowhere in Dabi. No GPS worked. And at the same time, I want to pull. Stranded. A graduate in master's chemical engineering. Nothing was working. I stood there in the midst of the bush. I parked my car. Parked the Amazon bus. Listen to me. I'm not asking. I'm not saying you cannot, cannot start small. But the problem if you remain small, then your God will be questioned. They will ask you, where is your God? Stood there out of the car. Went on my knee and I pray, I cry like a baby. I said, God, if you are God and you are still God, you send me here. When I was coming to the United Kingdom, the only thing you asked me to buy is a Bible. I didn't even know I was going to be a pastor. I am convinced. And within a week, God began to stir up men. Ah, I love what they preach, man of God. God began to stir up men. Men. Men left and right. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. God is with me. There was one day we went we in Beaumont. And I went a prayer walk. And things were not working. And God said to me while I was walking, I hear a footstep behind me. And he said, Samuel, I will tell your generation that I'm with you. Who sponsored the activities in your life? Who sponsored the happenings in your life? This is why men rise up and suddenly they die. Rise up and suddenly they fall. It's because they don't know and understand what sponsor, what carries them. Daniel was in captivity. Conviction. The king said to them, if you pray to your God, by tomorrow your head will be on the spike. By tomorrow we will feed you to the lion. Ah, look at a man of conviction. The Bible says, and Daniel, and Daniel took, he went to the top mountain of his house. 
You must understand that Bible don't just show written for a story so that you can just be reading it. And the Bible says Daniel went there and he faced the north. He was facing Jerusalem. He remembered there was a time that King Solomon made a declaration that if any man look into this mountain and cry to you, conviction, what do you do when you find yourself in trouble? Or sponsor what you do? And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Sometimes you are, your, your need insults God. So what God is going to do is when you go on your knees and begin to pray, he will answer you in his glory. That's what he does. He answers you in his glory. And the things you are waiting for, all this come from what? You must know this God. And conviction brings the step of faith. And the step of faith brings action of obedience. And action of obedience brings what I call the next thing. And the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Ah. Ha <laughs> ha. And they shall do exploit. And they shall do exploit. Because of time, because I wanted to pray, I'm going to jump quickly. And they shall do exploit. And they shall do exploit. The people that know their God, the people that convince, the people that have revelation, the people that have an encounter, they will walk as if they are not on the same planet. It was in the Bible that was written concerning people like you. He said, they look at them, they said, look at these men that have turned the world upside down. When you see men that know God, ah, I pray for you that in your own generation, you will know God. And it will be written upon your gravestone that this woman walked the planet God heart and he knew God. That your children will say, there's something we know about daddy. <laughs> there's something we know about mommy that she knew God. God said to me, he said in 2022, every family, you are instructed to raise an altar for him. Let your house be the house as an altar for God. No God. Because a time is going to come that the only thing that will deliver you is the God that you know. When there's no pastor, when there's no church, when there's no prophet, only you and Jesus. Hey! Karabas Satan. Only you and Jesus. I put you in front, in front of my head. Hold on, hold on. See, this is what happened in church. Like I said to you, you may say, Pastor, why do you like singing? Because I understand two things. Number one, God never restricts worship. God does not restrict worship. It, it, it's, a, it, it's like, you know, when you have a negative and positive pole. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? See, God inhabits the praises of his people. The second thing is that worship are ladders in the spirit. <laughs> so when you are locked up and nothing is working, he batapot akata and everything is looking around you as if you are a failure. You must get to a place of your heart in your corner. And you say 2022, you must deliver my destiny. Uh, uh, you see, 2021, you've given too much excuses. You've explained things too much. You've explained things too much. Pastor, what are you talking about? What about the Bible say, well, you know, we have to wait on God. Ah, we have to wait on God. Yes, I know. I know the Bible says you should wait on God. But listen to me. A hope defile. Make the heart sick. There's sometimes you must have to lock your door. You lock your table. The Bible, it was, it was Jesus that was giving an illustration of a man that needed something. And he said, when he went to his, uh, a friend, because the friend was sleeping, he said he will not come out and bless him. But because of his persistence, King James Version said, because of his impunity, 
he will not let the man sleep. And the Bible says, it's not because the friend did not have what he was looking for. Listen to me, everything you are looking for is waiting for a desperation in prayer. You've allowed this to happen carelessly too much. And in your family, you must raise an altar in 2022. Somebody rise up and told you, nobody rises in this family. You see your brother is not rising. You see your sister, no one is rising. And you sit down and you say, what will be, will be. Now this is 2022. You say, what will be, will be. Let me tell you something, sir. When you rise up, heaven himself rise up with you. Lift up your head, O ye gate, and be ye lifted up your everlasting door, that the king of glory might come in. Even the gate hearts. Who is this king of glory? Then there was a voice from inside. Ah, uh, he's a one that is strong and mighty. Raise an altar in your family in 2022. Raise an altar. There's something we've been praying for the first four days. We said it yesterday. I said the new fashion in 2022 is fire. Yeah, that's the new fashion. So if somebody asks you, what are you close to? What's your new fashion? It's not DG. It's not, uh, let me bring it home. It's not MNS. Don't smile. I, see you. I, do, I do not see you last in MNS. It's not MNS. It's fire. We are clothed with fire. Because that's the only thing that will sustain you in 2022. You think you've seen the worst of the wicked? No. You have not seen the worst of the wicked yet. Imagine if your dad was been talking and been giving excuses at the time of sensitivity. But you started praying in the spirit. You must know what your carries are. Because it's the fire that we dress on. Are you ready for fire this year? And God said to me, he said, Samuel, one of the indications that will happen to you in Robot House is that there will be indication of fire. He said, the fire that come upon you will begin to jump on individuals. Fire will begin to drop on individuals. Even today, tonight, 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 and I'm going to conclude with this one. First King chapter 18. Ah, they that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Elijah was the one on the Mount Camel. And I need to quickly print portraits on this one, but you must understand that I closed my, I closed my laptop because unless I would just keep preaching. It was, there was a competition. There was a competition. You must understand that in this planet and in this world, there's always competition. There's always what I call the tussle of power. Ah, I told you many times before. I told you many times before. You know, when we started the prayer, four days prayer upon, somebody was making a comment on Facebook. And he said, I know, this is the time many Christians will be shouting on God now. You know, and he said, God, 2022, do something for me. And I laughed. I said, look at an ignorant man. He doesn't understand that his head of politician in, the, in, in his northern local government is in one bush right now, fortifying himself for 2022. And you, all you're doing is putting very comment on Facebook. Ignorant. Ignorant. Do, do you know one thing? That God does not live in time. He lives in eternity. He put time for you. That's what the Bible says. He said, teach us to number our days so that we can apply our heart to wisdom. When it's time of the crossover, it's your time to come and say, God, I take charge of 2022. And that is the time you go on Facebook. I say, many Christians are twisting now. Who cares? I determine what happened to me on 2022. Here tonight. I determine the favor. I determine the lifting. I don't care what you tweet. Who cares about tweet? Who cares about Facebook? Who cares about what you shout about? Men are taking delivery of their system. It was Elijah that there was a confrontation. The Lord said, I should tell you, in 2022, there will be confrontation. I'm 
the prophet of doom, there will be confrontation. There will be confrontation. There will be a test that will shake the show pain of the whole world. Because when Daniel was given, it was a time that the children of Israel was in captivity. But in that state, Daniel was bold enough to say that they that know God in this season and in this time, they will still do exploit irrespective of what is going on around you. The Bible says, and Elijah said to them, he said, let's come all about satire. This is the part I love so much as I'm rounding up. I love this part so much because I've said it to you. Me and Dr. Chima used to say, I love God. I love this church. All of us, we are professional. All, all your pastors are professional. We can, God forbid, we will not close down this church. But tomorrow we can go back to our, our job. Amen to Jesus. If God is indeed real, let him show himself. We've seen him too real, sir. So we don't need your conviction. And Elijah said, there is no point for discussion. You are talking too much. You see, your problem is that you are talking too much. He said, there's no point for discussion. Let the God that answered by fire, let it be the God. If it's your God or my God, bring it out. And the Bible says, it was in the evening offering. That's why in 2022, you must build altar in your life. You must have a place of altar. I don't have time to preach on altar this morning. But what is an altar? It's a place of exchange. Sir. You must know that something sponsors things to happen. Are you listening to me? There's the results you are waiting for in the physical. Ah. If your altar is correct and there's a right fire on your altar, they will be begging you for job. They will be begging you for authority. You know you can get to a point where you understand. Listen to me. If the hard place of God in the Bible is real, you must be able to manifest it. When men are lining up and you know by the grace of God and by the demand and the power of God in your life, you know that every man that you meet must favor you. So while you are even standing and he's talking to you, you are expecting favor from him. You are not begging. He's not begging. This is the function of God inside of you. I told you this story. Moses told the Egyptian, the Israelite, he said, go and meet your masters and make demand of them. He did not have a beating with them. He didn't tell them they were coming. And the Bible said the children of Israel spoiled them. Who told them that they should release everything they have? There's a power that walks inside of us that commands things to happen. The place of altar. So Elijah said, he said, let's bring it up. And of course, you know the story. They danced from morning to night. And it was one singular prayer. When a man knows God, when a man knows his God, my word when it's time for battle. The Bible says, for if you fail in time of war, there's only one antidote. Your strength is weak. So Elijah went in. He said, oh, repair the altar. <laughs> Let me show you what it means to know God. <laughs> repair the altar. But there's one I love. We pray about it yesterday. He said that these people may know. Ah, he said these people may know. Rehoboth House, Nottingham, hear the voice of God. We will not need to shout in 2022. We will not need to scream in 2022. The miracle that will happen in this church, may we know that God has called us. He said that people will know that you have called us. And he shouted his voice and the fire came down. And the Bible says, he did not spare the prophet of God. He did not spare the prophet of Baal. He said, gather them together. And that night, he make a total alienation of every priest. You must understand that prophet of Baal system in the spirit. And he clear everything. Because a man dared to know God. I'm begging you in the name of God in year 2022. Build an altar in your room. Build a place of meeting point. Build a place of relationship. Let him know that he knows his voice. Let him know that you know. Let him know that you know him. When they ask you who is he, you say it's Jehovah Jireh. When you ask him who is he, you say Jehovah Nisi. When you ask him, the 
tell your children I may not have anything in the bank account but I know God that one day he will speak for us husband tell your wife honey the job I'm doing now is not what is not it doesn't look like what you what we promise each other but I know my God I know him that called me I know him that I serve I know he has brought us this far he will not let us go he has brought me this far he will not go back on me let the righteous declare boldly that the God is good and Elijah said is it Samuel? Is it Samuel? Is it Samuel? Look at what Elijah did. And Elijah is in heaven right now watching you. And Elijah is watching you in heaven now. He's sitting down at the right hand of Jesus watching you. And he's wondering. He says, he said, he's saying to you right now, what did he say? He says, son, daughter, Jesus didn't even die for me. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh with wicked wife. Laugh. He said, Jesus didn't even die for me. Because Elijah was before Jesus. And when Jesus was writing in John, he said something. He said, the, the least of you in the kingdom is greater. <laughs> the least of you in this kingdom is greater than Elijah. And Elijah called down fire. And all you are having is a sleepless night because your supervisor said you will not graduate. Ha! And Elijah is waiting. Elijah is saying, daughter, I'm, I'm not even in this position of grace. I'm not, a, I, I cannot claim the righteousness of Jesus. You can claim the righteousness of Jesus. You can come boldly to the throne of grace and look for help when you need them. And Elijah is saying, Elijah is saying, and you are sleeping. Elijah said, tell them, I call fire. I call down fire. I call down fire. But there's one that says, as many as they believe on me, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. You have eternity living inside of you. You have all the power. You have all the God hands living inside of you. And I just said, I should tell you that if I call down fire, you can shut down. You can shut down nations. Finish. When Elijah called down fire, you know, I love conferences. I love conferences. There was one that was making a death right now. I said, some people, which is good, it's good, because the Bible says a greater work than this will you also do. And I begin to study. When I was studying greater work, the Holy Spirit shot me down. He said, study the work of Jesus first. Do the work of Jesus, then do greater works. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus was a man that works on this same planet. The Bible said, the disciple look at him. When they saw the marvel of the strength of the exploit the man was doing, they say, even the sea obeyed him. Even the sea obeyed him. And when he was going, he gave his last statement. He said, all power on heaven and earth has been given to you. And he handed it over to you, sir. He handed it over to the church. And he said, you will decree a thing. And it shall be established. He said, the two of you shall come together and join your hands on anything on this planet. And you ask in my father's name. And he said, this sign shall follow them that believe. He said, in my name. In my name. In my name. In my name. In my name, they will do exploit. In my name, you will go to that interview. The problem is that you'll be going casually. The next time you go, before you sign that letter, watch this. For we don't know where we shall be yet. But when we appear, we shall be exactly like him. The word has not heard about you yet. The best of you is just coming. The best of you is just coming. 
2022 we will shut the mouth of lions 2022 we will walk upon our waters 2022 women will bring back their dead ah kata kata ya watch this 2022 is a year robot house of doing great exploit. I've told you before, we know where we are coming from. We know where we are. And we know where we are growing. You will do exploit in every area of your life. Man about But there's only way you will do exploit. When you know him. There's only way to know him. When you have an encounter. That's why the first prayer point you are going to pray this morning or tonight is God, I want your fire to burn in me. People just don't look at Goliath. Are you listening to me? People just don't look at Goliath and say, Goliath was not a joke, sir. He wasn't joking. He came with sword and with arrow. Your family members are not joking. That principalities and power is not joking. But there's a fire that you carry. When you are walking on the road, you are carrying fire. You carry so much fire that no evil, no enemy can stop you. In the place of work, are you ready for exploit? Are you ready to do great exploit? Are you ready to subdue nations? Are you ready to conquer left and right? Are you ready? Where they have rejected you, they will beg you to come back. Real brothers, you have eight minutes into 2022. You have eight minutes. What prayer point will you pray? Just one prayer point you will pray. God promised me. Let me tell you what he said before you pray. I am the fire. Do you desire the fire? I release all patataya. From this side, Katosata. From this side, fire. Shaba gata gata na mara. Ebeke beke gele losa. Fire. 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 Shaba kora bata na. So back at up, hey, hey. The fire is in this place. The fire is rolling right now. The fire is rolling right now. The fire is rolling right now. Fire. 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 Fire! 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 Fire for exploit! Come on now! Come on now! Yes, you are feeling it now! Yes, you are feeling it on your head! Basso Takata Yadaba! Every take it, take it, take it. Yes. yes. Baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. Fire for ministry. 
Fire for ministry. Fire for ministry. Ibasota Kataya. Fire is raining here. Epeto Pakatara. Kole Pesu Pratakata. Oh, yes. Pato Pretekete. Fire for exploit. Raise up your voice and say, Father, fire for supernatural exploit. Peso Takata. Petetete. Iprataka. Oh, now you have a countdown. Lift up your eyes now. Hold on. You have 44 seconds into your 2022. What will you do to your 2022? Open your mouth and bless in the spirit. 30 seconds. 29 seconds. 28 seconds. 25 seconds. 22 seconds. 19 seconds. 16 seconds. 14 seconds. 11 seconds. 8 seconds. 5 seconds. 3 seconds. Welcome to your year of bread. Welcome to 2022, the year that the world will know you are here, the year that you're not here, we know we are here, the way that your neighbor will know you are here, the year. That your family will know you exist. The year that your neighbor will know you exist. The year of your great exploit. In the name that is above all name, the favor that you don't deserve. Lift up your hand. There is a mantle in this house. The favor you don't deserve. The favor you don't deserve. I command doors open for you in 2022. Uba te katu ba kata kata ya. Okuli eke te buke te kete. Enianta uso pe te ba kata ya. Ebra kupa kata ya. Hey. I command men to begin to favor you. Not the arm, hear the voice of the Lord. Not the arm, hear the voice of the Lord. United Kingdom, hear the voice of the Lord. An army is coming. An army is coming. O Kadamo said, Tebele, in Bakata Bakatoba, a pretekelebos, in Prata Katakataya. Holy fire. Holy fire, oh. holy fire, born upon my heart. Holy fire, it got a back at a banana. A pretty kitty kitty. The Lord said, I should tell somebody. Before the end of this year, the Lord said I should tell two people. 
before the end of this year, you will get married. There's even one person, the Lord said, I should tell you, you don't even have a boyfriend yet. The Lord said, I should tell you, it will cost men because of the great upon this house. You will remember this word. He said, you don't even have a boyfriend. So when I said it, you laugh because you think it can never be you. Matsu pekete pagi prataka. Lembra kadosa taya brada. Thank you, Jesus. Favor. Welcome to 2022. You made it. You made it. You made it. Thank you, Jesus. So what do we normally do? I'll call Pastor Diana to take us in offering and thanksgiving. Please dance. Don't rush home. The anointing hall for 2022 is here. Don't rush home. You must be anointed on your head before you go. And go and do. This anointing is anointing for exploit. You will break record in 2022. You will shock yourself. You will shock yourself. You will shock yourself. Like, like Dr. Kazan said, now this year it will shock them. It will shock them we are here. It go loud. Hallelujah. Are you excited to see the year 2022? If you are excited, give the Lord a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. Can we just quickly step forth our hands of our pastor? As the Lord increase his grace, let this season, this year, be a year of greater exploits for him. In the name of Jesus, he will carry fire always, fresh fire always. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 to 3. That was the story of a man. God told Samuel, he said, take the oil. Because there is a man meant for exploit that's still in the wilderness. There is a man that should be helped that's still in the wilderness. You must bring him out of the wilderness to where he rightly belongs. And so God has spoken. There must be manifestation. Praise the Lord. But Simon told God, I know that the word you speak cannot return to you void. But it must prosper and be established with whatever you have said. But there is a problem. If Saul hears that I go to bring the man from the wilderness, he will cut off my head. So there is prophecy. There must be manifestation. What we connect prophecy to manifestation? God said sacrifice. That is, so there is prophecy. God has spoken. This is your year of exploit. This is your year of help. You will be right here. It must manifest. But you need to sacrifice. That is your first offering this year. Is called the offering of sacrifice. Connect prophecy to manifestation. Hallelujah. And so this morning, I don't want you to give the usual offering. Let something come out that says, Lord, I need business in year 2022. I need business because every prophecy that has come forth must become manifested in my life. And so that is the offering you are giving this morning. The offering that will connect every prophecy for year 2022 to manifestation. So, there is the account of the church. You can do um, transfer online or if you want to give um, offering, the ushers have the envelope, you can give. And as you, as you give that offering of sacrifice, you dance going through there that this year your exploit will manifest. Hallelujah. Choir please.
Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for giving us the grace to give our first offering for the year 2022. We ask that this offering of sacrifice will connect us to the manifestation of every prophecy that has gone forth this year in the name of Jesus. And there shall be great exploits in our life. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So this is the last time before you go. You must understand this prepare of the anointing. David was a natural and a normal guy. And he heard came upon his voice. And when the heard came upon his voice, exploits begin to follow exploits. Do you understand that? So when God said to say, Samuel, wait till the new year before you anoint man, no wife. I didn't tell the man of God, he said it himself. He was in the wilderness where nobody recognized him. But when the voice come upon his head, out of nowhere, recommendation was flying left and right. A man was in the palace when he was giving recommendation for David. He said, I know a man. He's a son of Jesse. He knows how to play. Where has he been since all this while? He said, bring him here. When he play, he, because he's very skillful, your skills need anointing. Your certificate needs anointing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your masters needs anointing. I told you, my children, just recently. Either you have masters in engineering. I know people that have four PhD and they are doing nothing with their life. Anointing comes upon you this night, this morning. The first anointing that will come upon your head in 2022 is anointing for exploit. Watch this. Men will begin to recommend you. When they are recommend you, just smile. Look at the number and say, just smile. The anointing is the one working. And how do we receive anointing in Rehoboth? It's with thanksgiving. So the choir will lead us in a powerful worship. Immediately you have your anointing. Like I said to you, it's not the time you go, go and put that oil in your head on anything that is valuable to you. And watch before the first quarter of 2022, how instantaneously the Lord will have lifted you up. How you will see a gap in one month and you will know that it's because of the oil of exploits over you. How how money will be looking for you. How help will be looking for you. How people will be praying down to bless you. Reopen the house. Ah, you are gifted. I hear God say to somebody that you are gifted. But your gifted need anointing. What is that anointing? Anointing that will announce the oil on your head. This is what is going to happen to you in 2022. People will begin to look for you. Man of God. They will say, where's Dr. Chima? He said, we know there's a grace of God over him. And the Bible says, men begin to look for John the Baptist. And they said, there's a voice in the wilderness. He did not need an ambulance because there was an oil over his head. Are you ready today? Because the oil, we've been praying over this oil for days. And it's for just one day. So that when the oil enter your head and you go out there, nation will see. He said, why do you skip like a ram? Why do you jump like a small hill? He said, before the Lord and before he's anointed. And he gave them, he gave them a warning. He said, he reproved king for their sake. He reproved king for their sake. And he said, touch not my anointed. And do my prophet no harm. There's an anointing that you carry. That nation bow down for you. There's an anointing that you carry. That we, when you say something, people listen. Are you ready for the oil? Father, we receive the oil by grace. And we receive the oil of exploit. The oil of exploit. Pastors, please come to the stage. Choir, please lead us in high praise. And uh, the oil, make sure the oil comes on your head. And of course, when you get the anointing, you can pray, small prayer. That's the end of the service. Crossover service, we don't share things. On Sunday, there's two services, the first service and the second service is going to be high praise and a prophetic worship session. So don't miss it for anything. God bless you. Hallelujah.